Geometry Dash is a massively popular 2D action platformer released in 2013. The game itself is quite simple, as it's an auto-scroller controlled using a single button, with your objective being to get to the end of 22 levels. There is a level editor that allows players to create their own challenging courses and upload them for others to play, and this spawned a competitive ranking system of its own, called the Demon List. However, despite being considered the best in the world, one player decided to fake almost all of his accomplishments. Today we'll figure out how he did it, how he got caught, and why he decided to fake the runs. I hope you enjoy today's video. First, let's start by getting an understanding of the game. The goal of Geometry Dash is to get to the end of a level without dying. You only have one button that controls your character, with its basic functionality being to make you jump. And if you make contact with anything aside from flat ground, you'll get a game over and start back at the beginning. Difficulty gets added to the game from two things, timing and the main game mode changing. Timing is very easy to grasp. If we look at the first level, we see a bunch of jumps that you can't fail as long as you jump before you touch the wall or hazard. Imagine a safe zone before and after the spike, where if you jump while in the zone, you'll land fine and be able to continue. In the second level, this concept gets challenged, as there's now a block after the spike, so the safe zone is greatly reduced, forcing you to take the jump early, or you'll hit the block and start back at the beginning. We'll revisit this concept when we look at levels of the highest difficulty, because the second thing that adds complexity to the game is the game mode changing. As while it still remains a one-button game fundamentally, what the button does changes through the course of the game. Here are a few examples. In the first level, you're introduced to a portal that changes your character into a rocket ship, with the button functionality now having you gain altitude when pressed and lose altitude when you let go. If we look further ahead in the game, you eventually get an ability called the Wave that's similar to the rocket but works by changing your angle instead of gradually ascending or descending. The angle change is instant and allows for tighter navigation than the rocket does, which introduces another class of unique challenges. Those are some of the mechanics, but the base game only has a handful of levels. The big reason for Geometry Dash's popularity was the inclusion of a level editor that allowed users to make their own levels to challenge other players. To better appreciate high-level play, let's look at the level creation process and see how the basic mechanics translate to the highest difficulty. When you've created a level, it doesn't get uploaded to the servers immediately. First, to ensure that the level isn't impossible, it requires that it be beaten before it will get uploaded. In the old days, this required the creator to beat the level, and resulted in them letting top players log into their accounts to get a level verified. This method obviously had issues, and a more common process is to use special programs or hacks that bypass the game's verification check, and once a level has been verified, it can be rated, with the base game having a rating system that goes from 1 to 10 stars but demon-rated levels have a further breakdown. Demons are sorted into easy, medium, hard, insane, and extreme, with the top 150 extreme demons being added to a website called Pointer Crate that classifies them as main list for the top 75 and extended list for the next 75. These levels are ranked by votes from the top players, and to give you an idea of why they're so difficult, let's take a look at the current number two extreme demon, Avernus. You'll notice that the character and game mode change repeatedly, and with each swap, the mechanic you're actively manipulating changes as well. In the beginning, you're on the rocket, but when it flips upside down, so does the gravity affecting it, with a button press now moving it down a common trick to throw off your muscle memory and visual expectations. This happens repeatedly and not just with the rocket, but with the other mechanics as well. And you might think, hey, this doesn't look hard, but this is just the beginning. The game also limits your visibility and places portals that teleport you to different parts of the map, and we haven't even looked at the wave section yet. You may be wondering how this is possible, and the answer is with multiple frame-perfect inputs. Let's break it down. A frame-perfect input is exactly what it sounds like, an input that you need to complete on one specific frame. If you miss, that's it, the run's over. But that's only if you're running the game at 60 FPS. 
Geometry Dash V-Syncs to your monitor, which means that the game synchronizes your monitor's refresh rate to help stabilize its performance. If this setting wasn't turned on, most games would have massive visual errors that would render them unplayable. Since most monitors have a refresh rate higher than 60, the community put a cap of 360 for FPS. And since you're now spending more frames in the frame perfect zone, you have a bit more leniency when performing these demanding tricks. You may be thinking that this makes things too easy, but I'd like to point out that doing 100 super jumps in Mario RPG are a mandatory trick that many prospective speedrunners have failed to master. Super jumps have a 3 frame window after the first dozen and occur on the same cadence, but they consistently gatekeep players from picking up the speedrun. Compare this to Geometry Dash, where the frame windows are dependent on the challenge, and your visual cues aren't always precise, and you're looking at something that's incredibly demanding. Avernus contains over 80 frame perfects, with players only having three hundredths of a second to react to some of them. Zoink would be the first person to verify the level, which means he was the first person to clear it ever. And to give you an idea of the difficulty, it took him over 27,000 attempts to succeed. But Zoink is a top player, Someone with less time in the game would likely take far more, with some levels taking players over 100,000 attempts to fully clear. To give you an idea of an equivalent feat you may be more familiar with, the Weather Tenko on Chaco Mountain in Mario Kart 64 is a difficult skip where you try to trick the game into giving you a lap by doing a precise jump. The odds of a single attempt working are low, and it took Abney an incredible 26,000 to hit a 3 out of 3 about on par with the attempts that Zoink put in when verifying Avernus. Verifying an extreme demon level is a big deal. It's the equivalent of full clearing a song in Clone Hero for the first time, or discovering a new skip in Mario Kart. You get a ton of recognition, and the video upload usually results in hundreds of thousands, if not millions of views. So let's look at one of the hardest levels, Slaughterhouse. At one point, Slaughterhouse held the position of number one demon and was the level that all of the top players were competing to be the first to verify. It was going to be a huge milestone for the community when someone cleared the run, and there were several players pushing to be the first. But on October 24th, 2021, somebody would conquer Slaughterhouse. The intro may appear to start slow, but the first jump you make is actually a frame perfect, as the placement of the upper spikes makes it impossible otherwise. This is a common tactic level creators will use to increase the difficulty of obstacles, as a down-facing spike can drastically alter the window for when a jump can take place. Shortly after this, there's a jump that requires a technique called bounce. If you complete a jump, then press and hold a second jump, you'll get slightly more height, with players naming this bounce. A bounce jump is necessary at 60 FPS, but at higher frame rates, the physics of the game change slightly, and it's possible to pass in a single jump. In the first 28 seconds, there were just under a dozen frame perfects, but the game tells you to get ready before you enter the first wave section, where in the first few seconds, the total number of frame perfects is doubled. Combine this with fading lights to throw off your timing, and you have a level that's more than earned the title of number one demon. In total, the level has 65 frame perfects, with most of them being placed in fast sequences, and the first person to verify Slaughterhouse was Space UK. Or so everybody thought, because it turns out that not only did he fake this run, he had been faking runs for about two years. April 25th would be the day that several of Space UK's records would come into question, as one of the moderators would analyze a few of his runs, and she discovered that there was an inconsistent delay from when an input was being registered on the video and when you would hear the clicking noise from him pressing the button. Ambient audio is a requirement when submitting runs, as it's a reliable way for demonless mods to verify if someone is playing back a hacked run, since it's hard to perform fake inputs and make the sounds line up consistently with what's happening on screen. In Zoe's video, she looks at an attempt that Space did on the hallucination, the 13th hardest level, and shows that his click delay is about 2-3 to three frames on some attempts he was running, until one specific moment. She hears a key click that doesn't sound like the mouse click she was hearing, and from this point on, Space's click delay takes on strange amounts of variance. Some inputs have as much delay as 5 frames, while others have as little as 1. This is a big departure from the consistency we saw of 2-3 to three frames earlier. Zoe thinks that the other key click we heard was Space turning on a macro that runs the game for him, and that he tried to sync up fake mouse clicks while it was playing on screen. 
She analyzes more of his videos, and on his Oblivion run, we see the same pattern. In the beginning, he has a click delay of 0 to 1 frames, but when he reaches 26% level completion, we hear a similar sound of another key being pressed. From this point, the click delay varies like in the previous video, though not to the same degree, and she shows the same thing happening in his run of Acheron. When Space UK was confronted, he initially denied it and appeared to have handled everything, with the demonless mod saying that the evidence was inconclusive. But as the day progressed, more runs were analyzed, and the mods put out a statement correcting their initial findings. Space admitted to faking the three videos that Zoe had accused him of, as well as three additional ones, and this appeared to be the end of the investigation, as the raw footage of his older runs no longer existed so they couldn't be analyzed. But just seven hours later, a new form of definitive proof would emerge. Zbot is an application that allows you to place checkpoints in a level to help practice difficult sections, but it also has the ability to create macros. By lowering the game speed, you can record your inputs on a difficult level. Then, when you complete it, you can reset your speed to 1, select the playback option, and when you go into the level, your macro is played back at regular speed. You might be wondering why this feature exists. And that's because, like a TAS, it's used to create showcases for levels, but it does come with a security feature. If you use a macro from Zbot to clear a level, there's one key but subtle distinction that will be present on the end screen. The text that says level complete will be 20% smaller. The developer included this so that fake runs couldn't be passed off as legit. And when the demon list mods started applying this verification method to Space UK, Almost every level he posted on the demon list since 2021 had the smaller text. At this point, Space started nuking videos on his channel and his Twitter, and on the 26th of April, he would release a statement explaining why and how he did this. After he beat his first extreme demon, he tried to clear the golden, and achieved a 96% completion before he full cleared it while accidentally having a cheat active that made him invincible when hitting hazards. He submitted the record anyway, and to his surprise, it was accepted, and on the next level he attempted, he got to a 97% clear before he died. He claims to have beaten it legitimately, but due to an OBS bug, there was no proof of it happening. But since he knew the cheated run of the Golden was accepted, he used Zbot to make a macro and submitted this run to the boards as well. A macro was the main method of faking runs that he used, which seems to line up with many of his videos having the end screen that using Zbot would produce. Eventually, he worked his way to being the number one player on the rankings, along with the Slaughterhouse Verified and multiple first victors under his belt. These are a big deal, as they result in hundreds of thousands, and in some cases, millions of views, along with recognition from the greater community. At this point, I need to mention that Zoe wasn't the first person to put forward suspicion of Space UK's runs. In October of 2021, a user named Colo would upload two videos, the first analyzing Space's 92% on Slaughterhouse, and a second analyzing the audio from his verified Slaughterhouse. In the first video, he notices the same inconsistent click delay that Zoe picked up on, noting that in one section of the level, the click delay is 5 frames after the movement, while in other parts, the delay is only 1 to 2 frames. When the minivave transitions into the big wave, the click comes 5 frames after. This is really bad, this is really, really suspicious. If that wasn't bad enough, Colo opened up the audio for Space's verified slaughterhouse in FL Studio, and he finds that the waveform of Space's audio has clicks that start before they should when matched up with the song in the level. There, the kick starts before than on the original audio, so it's shifted. He accuses Space of cutting the audio, which is essentially a splice, and despite both of these videos, Colo was ridiculed in the comments as being a hater, and even had people saying that he made up his evidence and I'd like to congratulate Colo for sticking to his guns and finally being vindicated over a year later. You might be wondering why Space got away with this for so long, or why nothing was done after Colo's videos, and there are a few reasons. First, he was good enough to get close to clearing these levels legitimately, as he did do attempts, so it was believable that he was capable of achieving a complete level. Second, this wasn't a case of a player that had no knowledge of the game cheating but a player that knew the game and could play competently, which facilitated how he was able to cheat and not get caught. And third, the methods he used were so incredibly simple that nobody thought to check the records immediately. It wasn't until a mod scrutinized his runs that discrepancies started to be taken seriously. 
As to why Kolo's videos never got any attention, there was another incident going on at the time that had the mods occupied, and given that Space was a trusted player, his videos on Slaughterhouse weren't given much attention and passed through to the leaderboards on Pointer Crate. If you're thinking the mod should have caught this earlier, I'd like to give a brief analysis of the first level he cheated, the Golden, where he played with the Invincibility cheat. Give it a watch as it plays in the background, and if you found the cheated part, comment with his percentage completion below of where you think it occurs. And if you're unsure, let's break down what I was able to find with the help of a runner. Here's a still frame at 48.32% completion, and you can clearly see that the sprite is overlapping with a spike. But if you guessed this, you'd actually be wrong. The hitbox for spikes is rectangular, and the sprite's hitbox doesn't always cover its entire body, so in some cases, what you see can be deceiving. If we look at 65.61% complete, we see this picture. The sprite once again overlaps with a spike, but if we overlay the hitbox for the spike, and then overlay the hitbox for the sprite, we see a small but definitive overlap. If you missed this, it's easy to see why a mod would, given that it wasn't blatantly obvious but skirted the line of being possible. And you could also say that they should have caught him on the subsequent records given that it had the smaller level complete text from Zbot. But this was how they caught him, it just took longer because he had already built a reputation. If we look at his cheated runs, there were a lot that he was first victor on, which is the first person to clear a level after it's verified but no claimed achievement is more prominent than his verified Slaughterhouse run. This means that Space's run doing it on October 24th of 2021 wasn't the verification. That distinction actually belongs to Doggy, who verified it on December 19th, two months later. This is unfortunate, as Space's fake verification racked up almost 7 million views across the two uploads of the run, when the recognition should have went to Doggy. Of his many first victor claims, there are two I'm going to mention, Acheron and Unnerved Aerial Gleam, which now belong to Doggy and Zoink respectively. And across his entire fake run spree, he attained the number one player ranking, which should have went to Crisis. It's worth noting that across his career, Space UK was voted player of the year twice while knowingly cheating runs and put on a stellar performance when reacting to the news. Oh my god! Holy <laughs> oh my god. On a few occasions, he had privated all of his videos and tried to exit the community, saying that he had achieved everything he wanted in the game. He ended up restoring the videos and kept playing, and recently said on Twitter that this was him trying to leave the community. You might be thinking that this shares some similarities with another video I did covering Shmui in the Clone Hero community. And it does, as both cases have someone with skill and knowledge of the game cheating records by playing over pre-recorded runs for fake achievements. I feel genuinely bad for the players he robbed of legitimate accomplishment and highly encourage you to check out Doggy, Zoink, Crisis, and the others listed below as they're great players that deserve the attention. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.